Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today we have Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. Tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Um, well, so my name is Gabriel. I'm based in Bulgaria. Uh, I was born here. Um, I've worked at VMware over the past uh, almost two years at this point. And um, a lot of my time here has been spent developing an open source tool called uh, Versatile Data Kit or VDK, um, which is, um, I guess, to describe it in a few words, it's, uh, it, it aims to allow people who aren't necessarily data engineers to be able to deploy, to develop, deploy, manage, and so on, um, data engineering infrastructure. Uh, in a pretty relatively easy way. Uh, it requires some knowledge in Python and SQL, of course. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think it's a much simpler tool than a lot of competing tools on the market currently. So it sounds quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I can share my screen and we can go over some details about it if you'd like. Yes, please. So we have a brief description of the project here. I'm not going to read all of it. But uh, I really like this graphic because it really uh, encapsulates really well uh, which parts of which parts of the whole uh, data engineering process of VDK takes care of. So typically we have this sort of very fragmented infrastructure where there's different tools used for different purposes. Maybe you have a few tools which are used to ingest data from a REST API or from some database that you're querying, or maybe you have an S3 instance that you're using, and then that is stored in some data lake, maybe S3 again. Um, and then that is going to pass through a variety of transformation tools. Maybe you have some SQL, some Python, and so on and so forth. All of these parts might be being managed by different teams. Um, you might struggle to have uh, effective communication between these teams, which would lead to issues, De uh, debugging might be difficult, and so on. Um, what Versatile Data Kit aims to do is it aims to uh, encapsulate all of, the, all of these different processes behind one tool. Um, and here we have another graph which uh, demonstrates exactly where uh, Versatile Data Kit is positioned. So. What, what the tool aims to do is to position itself on the actual data path. So we might have data sources here, which might be third party SaaS products or maybe databases. And then those uh, data sources would be ingested into a data lake. And then that lake, uh, the data from that data lake would typically get transformed in some way into, uh, uh, into a data warehouse, uh, which gives the data actual uh, strong semantics, and then we use that data to build reports. Uh, and so what Versatile Data Kit does is it, it manages all of the processes between these individual uh, data sources. So we would have a data job which runs and ingests data from some database into a data lake. Um, and then we have a transformation data job, which transforms the raw data into structured data. And then we can have a data job, which specifically aims to take that structured data and present it in some way, whether in a mode report or something similar. And yeah, um, there's, um, we have a quite a, an extensive wiki. We have a whole bunch of examples which uh, explain how to do different ways using Versatile Data Kit. So we have a bunch of ingestion examples, some data processing examples, some more, um, I guess, full-fledged examples of how you might use uh, VDK to, to build a bigger data pipeline or a set of data pipelines, I mean, an example for how to debug data jobs um, and so on. I have a relatively simple example uh, and we can move to it if you'd like, if you don't have any questions. Uh, yes, I'm excited to see it now. Mm -hmm. So here we have, this is the database that we'll be working with. We're going to be using a SQLite database. Um, so in case anyone isn't aware, SQLite is a database format, which um, is usually, uh, it's usually a single file, is oftentimes used for testing and debugging and so on, because it's very easy to, to set up a SQLite file, uh, to a SQLite database, sorry. Um, you just need to create uh, a database file, .db file, and then use it as a SQLite database. Um, and then we have our demo job here. And if we CD into it, uh, we can see its structure, which uh, currently, so within Versatile Data Kit, data jobs, um, which are kind of the encapsulated uh, units of work, um, they are composed of different steps. And steps can be either SQL or Python files. 
and uh, SQL, uh, SQL files are typically executed against a configured database. And in this case, um, if I look at my environment variables, we can see that um, here I have three uh, var variables relevant to VDK. Uh, the first two set are uh, database type and are ingest, uh, sorry, our uh, default ingest method. So when we perform ingestion, we are expecting a database of type SQLite. And when we perform SQL queries, we also expect the database of type SQLite. And then we have a path to our file. Uh, and then if we look at our individual steps, um, our first step creates the table. And then the, the second step, you might notice there are different types. One is SQL code, the other is Python code. Um, our second step uh, queries this URL, which if I open it, we can see what the data inside is. Um, so it queries this URL. Uh, it makes sure uh, makes sure that the response is successful. Um, it converts it into JSON, and then it sends that uh, object for ingestion. So um, typically, Python steps are structured in this way, where we uh, need to have a run function. And the run function takes a job input object as a parameter. Um, this job input is provided by Versat Data Kit, and it is the API which is used for all the different um, things that VK allows you to do. So in this case, we're using the send object for ingestion method. Um, there's also execute query method and a whole bunch of others. And we see that we set the rest target table as our destination table, which is the table that we create in this step. Um, and then we also have a config file, which is, uh, I've just provided the, the same uh, variables here. Um, you can provide configuration variables through a config file or through your environment um, or, th or through configuration plugins as well as VK has a, an extensible infrastructure where you can develop plugins for it. And we have a whole slew of, of different plugins. Uh, we support most of, uh, if I can just find it, sorry. Uh, most of the functionality in VDK is implemented as plugins. Um, and so we can see we have um, so multiple uh, plugins for ingestion. We have support for different databases, so Postgres, um, SQLite, Snowflake, Trino, and so on. And yeah, uh, so let's it's first- look at Here, the, the convention is that uh, you always you have a few steps and then each step should start with a number then underscore then the name of the step right? and so then it just executes them in order i guess yep it it uh steps are executed in alphabetical order so you don't have to prefix them with numbers but it's a convention mm -hmm. that is by um by all current users of vdk because vdk is uh, uh it is deployed as part of a broader uh data platform within vmware and I, I believe all data jobs follow this convention. Uh, but typically, steps are executed just alphabetically based on their mm -hmm. finding. Um, and yeah, so um, VDK is, uh, has a SDK, um, which is this, um, sorry, a CLI, I meant to say, um, which is this, uh, this tool that we see currently. Um, and we have a whole bunch of uh, commands. Uh, this list of commands can also be extended through uh, plugins. And let's run the data job. Oh, first let's check the actual uh, database. I have dbver open here. Uh, and we see that there's no table. And if we run the job, so here at the end, we can see our uh, execution summary. Uh, specifically, what's interesting is the steps list, where we see a list of all the steps, their names, their types, uh, start time, end time, and in this case, we see that they were both successful. So if I can refresh this, we see that we now have this table, and it has our data in here, which is the um, the same data that we now, um, just running data jobs isn't uh, that exciting. Um, you could just run this code. Uh, so the other part of VDK, which is a little bit more difficult to demo, 
uh, would be the control service. These are the main two components. One is written in Python. The control service is written in Java. Um, the control service can manage deployed data job objects and it can track their execution, their success rate, uh, refreshing. Uh, you can monitor them. Uh, you can send email notifications. Um, they are typically scheduled using a, um, a cron-like schedule, uh, but uh, we recently developed an uh, integration with Airflow, so jobs can also be managed um, sequentially uh, in a through DAGs, through Airflow DAGs. And yeah, um, I can't really demo that because I can't schedule a job uh, and wait for it to run. But yeah, we have this uh, functionality. Uh, it's described at length. Um, it's not here. It should be in... Uh, Anyways, I can't find it, but yeah. Um, so that's it. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, I like this uh, convention when you just put files there mm -hmm. and uh, like there is no strict order. I didn't even see any imports, right? So you just, uh, uh, you don't have like a, this big dependency that like you have to import, then you can test locally things, you can test, things locally easier. So it looks pretty cool. I'm wondering how many people are working on this? Um, so on this tool in specific, I um, think uh, around 10 people might be somewhere between 10 and 15. I'm not 100% uh, clear. Um, there's, there's two teams which are kind of working on it. One is uh, my team, which uh, works specifically on the open source project. And then there's a separate team of about the same size, which specifically manages the deployment of this project within the uh, data platform that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, it's also possible to use it as a, like you have some sort of SaaS offering, some sort of cloud platform. Um, not currently, but it's something that we're uh, trying to do. We're trying to, to, mm -hmm. to productize this uh, as a, yeah. Uh, and that should hopefully happen sometime next year. Mm -hmm. So what are your plans in addition to that? So one, uh, one direction is putting this to the cloud and making a managed service. So it's easier for people to get started. Um, but when it comes to this open source part, what are your plans? Um, well, we'd like to, um, we think that the, our, uh, our platform is a lot easier to, easier to work with, um, than some competing platforms. So for example, Airflow does something similar, but a lot of times, uh, people will use a, some Airflow management platform. I think there's one called Astronome, um, or they might have a dedicated team, to, um, that manages their. Um, Airflow instance, mm -hmm. uh, because it's a big, big project, or sorry, big uh, platform. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to enable uh, people, so maybe data engineers or data scientists with an interest in data engineering to build their own data pipelines and manage their own data pipelines as easy as possible without having to use a, an external service or have a dedicated team um, for managing this platform. Um, and yeah, um, we, that's, that's, I, I guess the main goal with this project. Um, and, but, uh, so you were talking about managing it down and so I started wondering like, what is the, like, how do you actually use it? Do you like to predictionize? So you create a pipeline. So I created a pipeline as a data scientist. And now I want to run it, let's say in the cloud. What are my next steps? Do we package it in Docker and then deploy it through AWS Batch or? Uh, this is all my next steps. So, uh, we, we can see we have the deploy function here, mm -hmm. uh, the deploy command. So um, I don't have a, I'm not connected to a, a running control service right now, but mm -hmm. there's, uh, a, a, if you have a control service running that includes a Git server, which manages your, um, your data jobs. So you also get uh, automatic uh, ver versioning of those jobs, which obviously helps with debugging. Um, so yeah, um, jobs, once jobs are created, you can uh, 
you can deploy them. Your, uh, all the packaging serialization and so on is managed automatically. And then uh, you can configure their schedule through their config.ini file. And yeah, afterwards they run based on that schedule. So whether hourly or daily or however often you'd like them to run. Mm -hmm. And if uh, somebody wants to contribute to your project, how can they do this? Um, well, they would have to, uh, I, I guess, typical uh, contributing standards. Um, you would fork the project, then uh, make your changes, create a pull request. Um, and yeah, uh, assuming it's useful and passes review, it will be merged upstream. Mm -hmm. Do you have any good first issues? Um, I believe so, yeah, I, I hope. Uh, I think we can sort by by good first issues. Oh, great. Yeah, we have, so a, have a special tech for that. Yeah, so um, if anyone thinks this project is interesting, we would be really happy to, to see contributions by external people. Mm -hmm. And well, what's the process? So let's say if I want to take uh, uh, this issue number nine, or nine, right? So do I just go to this issue and say, okay, I want to start working on this or what's the process? Um, well, yeah, you would uh, fork the project, uh, make the, I guess, make the relevant changes. Um, mm -hmm. Create a pull request, you said. <laughs> I create a pull request and then link to the issue just so it's... Uh, mm -hmm. But like uh, what I was asking is like, you somehow need to indicate that I'm interested in working on this issue. Sorry? Like you need to say that uh, I'm interested in working on this issue, so you know that somebody is working on that, right? Oh well, then you would write a comment, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what I think is it's obvious. Or, uh, yeah, we are also we have a uh, Slack channel on uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation Slack, uh, so it's at uh, versatile data dot kit, and yeah, you could also mention it here. Mm -hmm. You have a link to this channel somewhere on in your report? Um, uh, yes, but I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> okay, probably if you just uh, search for this. The contact section. Okay, cool. Uh, do you have any advice for anyone who is watching this? Um, I, I might have, have advice for data engineers that might be watching this. Obviously our mm -hmm. project is um, somewhat, somewhat specific to that, uh, to that field. Um, but yeah, I think um, if, if you're a working data engineer and you think that your infrastructure is a bit unwieldy, um, try out our project. Uh, it might be able to streamline and simplify a lot of your infrastructure. And yeah, uh, to anyone else, um, check the project out if you think it's interesting. If you think, uh, if you feel like it's uh, something you can, you're able to contribute to, uh, that would be amazing. And yeah, okay. that's it. I think. Yeah, thanks, Gabriel. I see that you're running out of batteries, so hopefully your computer doesn't um, die before we finish. So I wanted to thank you for joining us today for doing the demo. Amazing project. Thanks for doing this in open source. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been great. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.